Cavalcade of America. Starring Dorothy McGuire in Lady on a Mission. Presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. to my knowledge that the American ambassador seeks to secure the release of a political prisoner in our hands. The prisoner is under arrest as an enemy of the people and a traitor to the state. You will do everything necessary to prevent the American ambassador from accomplishing his object. This is not Europe, 1949. It is Paris, 1794. Paris in the wake of the revolutionary terror. The prisons filled, the mob still bloodthirsty, and the air chilled with hatred. To this Paris of 1794 has come the new American ambassador, James Monroe, with his wife, Elizabeth. Don't stop, Elizabeth. I can't play anymore. Why not? Because you're not listening. You're staring at your desk as if it weren't there. I'm sorry, dear. I wasn't listening. James, this trouble is making two strangers of us. Why won't you talk to me about it? It's not for you to worry about, my dear. But I do worry, James. A woman's life depends on us. My dear, every request we have made to the Office of Prison Discharges has been refused. Request? It's no longer a matter of request. Today, tomorrow, Madame Lafayette may be taken from the prison to the guillotine. What more can I do? Oh... The whole world knows America's debt to General Lafayette. This is his wife. Come here, my dear. Yes, James. Sit on the arm of my chair. All right. Now listen, my sweet. As a man, I would go through stone walls to save an innocent woman from the guillotine. But as the American ambassador, I cannot officially demand the Committee of Public Safety to release its own prisoner. But Monsieur Carnot is on the committee, and he's our friend. He's our only friend. And if his sympathies to America were known, he would be in grave danger. France today is not ruled by reasonable men, Elizabeth. The revolution has passed into the hands of tyrants who trust no one. You mean men like Le Groux? What do you know of him? Oh, only that he was once a butcher. Yes, and he's still called that. What's that? Another street mob, Elizabeth. Oh, it's a big crowd. And they have clubs. They're beating someone. Hey, come away from the window. That man's been hurt. Oh, James, he's fallen. No, no, look, he's got away. He's crossing the square. It looks like Monsieur Carnot. He, he's running toward our house. Elizabeth, it is Carnot. His face is bleeding. Hurry, James, hurry. He's at the door. How do you feel now, Monsieur? Are you hurt badly? Oh, no. Just a few scratches. I, I apologize, madame, for my coat. Oh, please don't. Uh, here, Monsieur Carnot, have some brandy. Tell us what happened to you. Uh, just another street entry. But surely a member of the Committee of Public Safety is secure from attack. Unless, of course, he is under suspicion. Suspicion? Of what? Shall we say, madame, of harboring kindly thoughts toward a foreign representative? Oh, then that is why you were attacked. Of course, it's dangerous for you to come here. Very. This must be my last visit for a while. That is why I so deeply regret the bad news I bring. What bad news? Today it was announced. Everything will be done to prevent Madame Lafayette's release. But why? She's innocent of any crime. Yes, and so were her sister, her mother, her grandmother. I saw them go together to the guillotine. Oh, Jane. Madame, I have done everything. I have talked to more people than I should. You know where my sympathies lie. I can do no more. Does the committee know that President Washington is concerned? That he has asked me to do everything I can to secure Madame Lafayette's release? They laugh at that, Miss. America, they say they're a long way off. James, can't you talk to them? Your husband can do nothing, Madame. Any official act would only antagonize them and possibly shorten Madame Lafayette's life. But you're letting her die. Elizabeth, we cannot ask the impossible from Monsieur Carnot. Thank you for what you have done, monsieur. 
I shall have to report to my government that we have failed. Madame, you walk, walk, walk up and down. You wear yourself out. Is Mr. Monroe still in his study? I saw him writing when I came upstairs. Felice. Oui, madame. You go about Paris. Tell me, why do they hate Americans? The people of France do not hate you, but they are tired. They've suffered so much. Well, what do they say about us? Well, I, I don't know, madame. You do know. Now tell me the truth. Well, they say the Americans, they like their liberty and their freedom at home, only for themselves. But for us here, well, they, they do not care. That's not true. No, madame, no, I know it is not. But that is what they are taught to believe. Felice. Oui, madame. Do you know Madame Lafayette is in prison? Madame, all Paris knows that. And that my husband has tried to secure her release? I, I have heard that. Uh, shall Madame wear her blue gown tonight? You don't believe it, do you? I do not understand these things. Felice, do your people care whether Madame Lafayette is set free? Suppose... Suppose we could help her. Madame, whenever a prison door is open today, the heart of France opens a little bit. Then there must be some way. Some way to reach her in that prison. Felice. Oui, madame? I have an idea. For what, madame? A way to help Madame Lafayette. But how, madame? It's so simple. I don't know why someone hasn't thought of it before. Oui, madame. To go to the prison. Oui. Drive there in the embassy carriage. Show the people and Citizen Legrue, the whole world, America's sympathy. Would your husband do it? No, he couldn't, but I could. You, madame? You go to the prison? Yes, why not? But you do not know what it is like. The worst people in Paris are always there. The scum of the street. You would not be safe for a moment, madame. I am not afraid of people. No, because you do not know. You have been sheltered all your life. No, madame, no. Even I would not go to the prison. If that's where Madame Lafayette is, that's where I shall call. I'm going to tell my husband. He'll want me to do it. <laughs> My dear girl, where did you get such an idea? James, listen to me. Do you me. think for one moment I would permit you to drive through these streets to a prison? Well, why not? Because of the danger. The enormous, unspeakable danger Madam, to Madam Lafayette is in greater danger. And how would a visit from you help her? It would show the world where our sympathies lie. My darling, you amaze me. Wouldn't it make the committee think again about releasing Madame Lafayette? Oh, a very slight chance. But there is a chance. I couldn't consider it. Not at such great risk to you. James, when you came courting me, you didn't talk of risk. You, a revolutionary soldier, I, the daughter of a British officer, we weren't afraid. That was different. Because we're older? Is it more important to be safe? James, when we fell in love, we said we'd dedicate our lives together to our new freedom. We've done that, my dear. You have. I've just worn new gowns and curtsied at bigger receptions. James, let me help you now. Let me do this for you. I should have left you at home safe and protected in Virginia. Oh, no, James. No man would want his wife in the city now, much less permit her to visit a prison. Not even to save the life of a great and good friend. Uh, very well. If you feel so strongly about it, I shall go to the prison. But you can't go. You're the American ambassador. Your acts are official. Mine aren't. I'm the only one to do it. Come here to this window. Yes, do you see that thing lying in the square? Yes. That was a man killed this afternoon by a mob. I, I, I know. You see those people, they're scavenging. There might be a button. To oh, save. James. Look, they see us up here. Look out! Look back. They stone us even here. Now you see how they feel. Oh, no, my sweet, it's impossible. You refuse to let me go? Yes, Elizabeth, I do. Then I shall have to go without your consent. You understand the risk? Yes. You know what a small chance you have of helping this woman? I would risk everything for the smallest chance to help her. And to show the world that we don't forget. I have uh, underestimated you, Elizabeth. I'll not stand in your way. <laughs> Ah, Citoyen Carnot, welcome to my new house. 
You are prompt, did he? You were sent for me, Citizen Lecoe. Yes, yes, come in, come in. We meet these days only in committee. I thought it would be pleasant if two such old friends had an informal visit. If you wish, Citizen. Cognac? Thank you. I pride myself on this cognac. It is from one of our most aristocratic sellers. Vive la France. Vive la France. And to our old friend, Madame Guillotine. Mm. Good, is it not? Yes, very good cognac. A pity you do not judge people as well, Carmel. What? What do you mean? You are on remarkably good terms with the American ambassador and his charming wife. I have called her that. I don't blame you for that. She has superb shoulders. Monsieur Legault, what did you want to see me about? Carno, tonight you received a note from the American embassy. That is true. I should like to see that note. It is a personal matter, citizen. There are no personal matters between members of the Committee of Public Safety and a foreign representative. Very well. Here it is. Simply a request that I be at the prison tomorrow to escort Madame Moreau when she calls her Madame Lafayette. But when she calls. Ah, how clever. I did not credit the Americans with such astuteness. So, Madame Monroe would like to call on the prisoner Lafayette. Have you answered? That won't be necessary. I shall simply be at the prison to help these Americans behind my back. Citizen, France is surrounded by enemies. She needs America's friendship. We need no one, Colonel. Least of all America and her ideas of freedom. You will not answer that note. But I must be at the prison. It would not be safe for Madame Arrow to go there. I quite there. agree. It would be unfortunate if there were an accident. We shall both be at the prison tomorrow, Colonel. I shall make quite sure Madame Monroe has no chance to see the prisoner. I shall see to it myself. You're listening to Dorothy McGuire as Elizabeth... Wife of James Monroe, America's ambassador to France in 1794. In Lady on a Mission, presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. (laughs) Madame Lafayette wife of America's great friend, has been imprisoned in Paris in the days of wrath and turmoil following the French Revolution. Elizabeth Monroe, wife of the American ambassador James Monroe, resolves to secure her release. Drive faster, can you believe? There are people in the street make it difficult, madame. I know, but be careful of that. They are throwing stones, madame. It's all right, Philippe. Keep driving. Please, please, madame. Let us go home. It is too dangerous for you. They won't hurt me. I mean them no harm. Are you all right, madame? Yes, yes, Philippe. Just keep going. Ah, this room will do nicely. It overlooks the prison gates. Oui, citoyen le groupe. I shall remain here this afternoon. If there are any visitors to the prison, bring them to me at once. Oui. It will not be necessary to inform anyone we are here. Uh, no, citizen. That will be all. Well, Carlo, <laughs> you will admit this is an amusing idea, huh? I find it contemptible. Oh, come, come, Carlo. You cannot keep Madame Monroe's charming conversation to yourself. Besides, this chamber affords us an excellent view of the courtyard. Why do we need that? Just in case anything should occur. The rabble out there are not friendly to foreigners. Do you think this will help France? It will help Le I did not fight my way up through the revolution, twisting this way and that to save my own head. Only to be made a fool of. So you make war upon a woman? I make war on anybody who opposes me. Come, 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 no ladies, not quarrel. I look forward with pleasure to this visit from Madame Monroe. Uh, she's arriving now. Look down below. Uh, in a carriage with American insignia. I'll go down. You'll stay here. 
She steps out of her carriage with such grace. I admire your taste, Colonel. I must go, citizen. Look. There's a car guard at all areas. Yes. Yes, she attracts attention, eh? <laughs> she will not find it so easy. They are annoying her. Stay where you are. That will teach her not to go where she has not wanted. I must say the lady has courage. She is crossing the courtyard now. In the name of heaven, this is no place for her. I shall convince her that. Carlo, we won't need your help in this discussion. Legu, this lady is an American citizen. You have enjoyed her conversation. I intend to kindly leave by that rear door. But get out. Entrez. Le citoyen Le Gros. Une femme pour visiter une prisonnière. Quelle lampe. Je l'attends. Par ici, madame. Monsieur Le Gros. Welcome, madame. You are surprised to see me, eh? I... I expected someone else. I shall try to make up for your disappointment. I am enchanted to meet you. Monsieur Le Gros, I ask permission to visit the prisoner, Madame Lafayette. Mm, this is a pleasure. I rarely have time to enjoy the luxury of conversation with a beautiful woman. I am here to request permission. Yes, 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 I understand. I have been told of your country's interest in the prisoner Lafayette. I come unofficially, monsieur, to see an unfortunate friend. You are as thoughtful as you are lovely, madame. If you come unofficially, why is your carriage emblazoned with American insignia? Well, it would hardly be safe to travel in the streets of Paris in one that is not identified. And now, the permission, tiens, monsieur. Tiens, 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 you are impatient, eh? <laughs> but it is becoming the flush on your teeth. There is no need, Don't monsieur. Me, I was carried away. <laughs> hey, I quite understand Carlos Admiral. Really, monsieur. There are many facets to the request you make, Madame Moreau. Why should I permit the American ambassador's wife to make a visit to the prisoner Lafayette? Out of kindness. Kindness. My power does not spring from kindness. No. Then perhaps in the name of human decency. Or perhaps because you are a woman, you are used to winding men around your finger. You flatter me, Monsieur Le Gros. You do less than flatter me, madame. This visit of yours is not to my taste. You fool no one, madame. I am not trying to fool anyone. Madame Lafayette is an innocent woman, and all the world knows it. She is an enemy of our people, an aristocrat. Ask the people if she is their enemy. Ask them and see. They know she's innocent. You try my patience, madame. Please, I ask you once more, let me see Madame Lafayette. The answer is no. No. I advise you to leave this prison at once. Suppose... I choose to remain. You cannot remain here. I can remain outside those prison gates. You wouldn't dare. Why not? The worst rabble in Paris gather outside these gates. Seize and pickpockets. No one can be responsible for your safety. I shall wait there, at the gate, until Madame Lafayette is brought to the prison yard. You won't stay long, Madame. I shall remain as long as is necessary, Monsieur Le Gros. <laughs> Regardez, une risco. Que tu viens vérifier, toi. Elle est belle, hein? Please, please, I just want to stand here at the prison gate. Oh, regardez le beau collier. Oh, c'est magnifique, hein? Oh, you admire my necklace. Here, you can have it. Merci, madame. I'm waiting to see a friend, a lady who is a prisoner in there. Il lui a donné le collier. Qu'est-ce que tu as pour moi? Et pour moi? Un baiser? <laughs> Don't touch me! Bien, tu n'as qu'à l'embrasser, voyons! Leave me alone! Can't you hear me? I'm an American! Oh,
to go. Look at the crowd. I, I see. She's pushed against the railing. Fool. Why didn't she leave when she could? I told her it was dangerous. Oh, there's no time. What can I do? Open those gates and let her in to see Madame Lafayette. Let go. What Madame Moreau wishes. I, let go. I... This will turn every government in Europe against you. Think what it means. Ah, I am thinking. Very well. I have no choice. Let the Monroe woman in the gates. She shall see the prisoner Lafayette. But I warn you, despite Madame Monroe and the whole American embassy, the prisoner will not go free. Prisoner, you have three minutes. Is this the American lady? Madame Lafayette. My dear Madame Monroe, I... I heard what you did. It was not important, Madame. I have come for my husband, the American ambassador. I know. To tell you, he's trying to do everything possible to secure your release. My good friend. You must have hope, madame. I do now. When my husband went to America, I was a girl. I hated your country for taking him from me. When he came back, I understood. There was a new independence in him. The very fire of freedom. Your country is dear to me. My country is very grateful to you, madame. And to France. My friend, this is an American lady who is with us. Give her your heart. Citoyen, voici une dame américaine qui est notre amie. Donnez-lui vos cœurs. The time is up. Goodbye, Madame Lafayette. Through you. The American people send their eternal friendship to France. To President George Washington. My dear Mr. President. Oh, James, hmm? are you busy? Oh, come in, my dear. I want to read to you this report I've just written. It concerns you very much. It concerns me? Yes, my dear. To President George Washington, my dear Mr. President, this is to report that our friend Madame Lafayette was lately set at liberty. Hmm? Although I could not make official application to the Committee of Public Safety in her favor, yet it was done according to an understanding informally made and of which I was aware. <laughs> Madame Lafayette has departed to join her husband, the Marquis in Austria. What does that mean about an informal understanding? Diplomatic language, my dear, oh? to describe what you did. Oh, James, you didn't mention my name. I promised you that. But after all, you did it, my dear. <sighs> I merely went to the prison. And you knew how the people would talk about your visit. It was that talk which forced the committee to release Madame Lafayette. Elizabeth, wish you'd tell me one thing. Oh? What did you say to Madame Lafayette when you met? Do you really want to know, Jane? Very much. I said, I am here at the request of my husband, the American ambassador. At my request? Yes. I never asked you to do that. I never even consented. Yes, you did, James. Oh? Though perhaps you didn't know it. When? The day you asked me to share your life. The day you married me.
Tonight's original cavalcade play, Lady on a Mission, starring Dorothy McGuire, was written by Margaret LeWerth and was based on a chapter from the book First First Ladies by Mary Ormsby Whitten, published by Hastings House. House Jameson played the part of James Monroe. Scott Cotsworth was LeGru. And Bernard Grant, Carnot. The music for the DuPont Cavalcade is composed by Arden Cornwell. Conducted by Donald Boring. This is the person speaking. Our Cavalcade play next Monday night, When We're Green, We Grow, is a heartwarming story of one of the pioneers in home demonstration work, Jane S. McKimmon of North Carolina. It is particularly appropriate that we bring you this story next week when the farm communities of America celebrate National Home Demonstration Week. Our star will be the beloved Hollywood favorite whom you've seen in dozens of pictures, Jane Darwell. Be sure to listen.